Aloha, it's Dave Lawrence. How you doing? A big mahalo for tuning in today. I'm fortunate to have a special guest joining me who has a strong connection to the islands. He lives at least some of his life on the Valley Isle, where he and his family have kicked in to be part of community events like Berry Fest for Mana'o Radio, where I got to meet him a couple years ago. Concerts to benefit the schools on Maui. He recently was in on the All-Star Jam. You may have heard about or even been lucky, fortunate enough to be at New Year's Eve. Alice Cooper, James Hutfield of Metallica, and many others coming together on Maui to raise funds for the, the Maui Food Bank, a noble cause. He and his group have a tasty recent CD and, uh, and I guess, CD DVD release. You could properly call World Gone Crazy. A pair of upcoming dates here in the islands, April 1st at the MAC in Kahului and April 2nd at the Blaisdell Arena for what I believe is their first gig in Honolulu since ringing in the new year at that arena for 2003-2004 New Year's Eve. And both of these gigs will feature war as opener. That's going to be fun to hear about. And it's a pleasure to welcome Doobie Brothers guitarist, vocalist, and all-around nice guy, Patrick Simmons. Aloha and mahalo, Patrick. Aloha, Dave. How you doing? I'm good, my brother. How about you? Doing great. Thank you for asking. And uh, so where are, you, uh, where are you at today? I am in uh, Haiku in Maui. Nice. Dig it. So you're right in the right in the neighborhood, so to speak. Beautiful day. <laughs> it is. We've been dodging it the weekends and <laughs> weekends have been nasty and the weekdays have been looking good. Yeah. Um so uh how much time do you sp- are you spending on Maui these days, Patrick? Well, whenever I'm not on the road, I'm here in Maui. I'm at home. Full time. Full time. I love that. That's really good. Um and what a great picture of you. I've been wanting to hear some details about it. I actually had had Mick Fleetwood on just a couple of days before the New Year's shindig. Um, and I have this photo here. It's Metallica's James Hetfield, you just a few inches away, Mick Fleetwood, Chad from Nickelback, Alice Cooper. And wasn't Michael also there, part of that? Uh, Mike McDonald was there with us, yeah. He, he sang. and uh, Eric Gilliam, a bunch of mixed guys. As well, yeah. Tell me about the gig. How'd you get involved? How'd you first hear about it? And rehearsals, if there were any, and just the story behind it all. Um, Shep Gordon uh, kind of was the sponsor. Uh, I think maybe it's his uh, it was his idea to to do this uh, fundraiser. And I think this is, his, if I'm not mistaken, this was the third year they've done the the, the show. And uh, he has, you know, different people uh, each year. I think Alice maybe has participated a couple of times. Uh, but it's uh, it, it was at his restaurant uh, um, where he's one of the one of the partners out in uh, Wailea Mala Restaurant, and um, it was just a really cool thing. They, they uh, basically called up the, the various artists and asked them if they would participate, and uh, we all, of course, jumped at the chance to. To work together and then to just, you know, be helpful within the community and, and uh, you know, the, the uh, Maui Food Bank and the Maui Arts and Cultural Center are both important uh, uh, things to support here on the island. So, uh, you know, we're really, we were all really glad to be a part of it all. Um, and we rehearsed, uh, I think we rehearsed up at Mix House up in uh, Kula. And uh, that was kind of fun. We had a, you know, a few days beforehand, we all hung out together and went through the songs and uh, figured out the, the order of tunes and what we were going to play on and who was going to play on what. And uh, and then we went, everybody went back home and woodshedded a little bit to, you know, lock the songs in. And then uh, we just got up that night and wham, bam, everybody jumped right in and, and had their parts and a bunch of pros it was really a good thing it's a great picture dude i mean especially i'm sure for metallica fans or doobie brothers fans just the two the two of you next to each other had that been the first time you've been around james or uh you know i i had met james somewhere i can't even remember where a long time ago um but that was the first time we'd ever gotten together and, and jam and that was that was really cool he, he uh, you know i i was uh glad that i was able to play with him because i love to turn up and play loud and so uh it was it was like rick Vito was standing next to me and uh somebody said who's going to play with james and rick turns and says pat is <laughs> so uh, i said well that's cool you know uh and so uh 
I just turned my amp up as loud as it would go. And, <laughs> and uh, James turned to me later. He goes, you're going to play the solo, right? I go, uh, well, if you want me to. He goes, well, you know, I I play a little solo guitar, but, you know, we have a, we have a you know, a lead guitar player, and he plays most of the solo, so I'm hoping you'll take the solo on this. So I go, well, okay, that's cool. So, uh, you know, that was that was fun, too, to be able to just, you know, crank it up and blast. So that was that was fun. And he was up there at Mix House a few days in advance, too? Yes. It, we, everybody that uh, played uh, that night at the show, except for Alice. I, I don't think Alice was here, because I'm not sure he was... Uh, available. Oh, I know he wasn't available, but I'm not even sure he was on island at that time. But uh, yeah, everybody else uh, that that played that night was there at Mix House, and it was fun. Does uh, Does James have a place over there? Or was he just visiting? I don't really know, to tell you the honest truth. Um, seems like he sp- spends a lot of time over here because he was saying, you know, he had been over uh, a while before, and then he was there through the holidays, and they were coming back sometime in the near future. To oh wow stay so i i wouldn't be surprised maybe he's got a place over here i didn't you know quiz him on that yeah yeah do you know you know that the uh the lead guitarist he was referring to is kirk hammett right of metallica and he lives here in hawaii kai on our island <laughs> oh that's cool dude it's very cool because you guys like kind of when you live on this island patrick it's like it gets a little i don't know if envy is the right word because you they're all all of you guys the stars the rock guys are all over there Right, so we don't have a whole lot of them living on this island. So I'd, I'd say we have a little bit of pride having Kirk over here. Yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> he's a monster. He just sat in with Tool the other night. Cool. Did, did not make up for your gig, okay, and missing that. But <laughs> I felt like we were getting our own dose of Metallica flavor. Uh, a real real novelty uh, night uh, that night to go from all the different styles of music and uh, and then end up, you know, playing with Alice. It was very cool. Do you hang with him over there? Uh, not really. You know, he comes in and out, and I've, I've seen him a few times. And I, I see him probably more on the mainland than I do over here, you know, uh, around different different places. But, uh, you know, I've known him for, gosh, since the very early 70s. We used to play shows with uh, the band, you know, the Alice, Alice Cooper band back in the early 70s so i've i've known him for a really long time sure uh and that's one of the nice things about you because kind of what you were saying um is that you actually live here and you spend time here you're not it's not just like a, a second house or whatever for you and because i'm sure it's of curiosity to people who listen uh just if, if you could try to paint a picture or well, describe what your place is like here in the islands well, uh, we live out uh, kind of on the on the North Shore here, the Windward side, so uh, it's probably like the North Shore of any of the islands. We get a little more uh, rain, it's a little more uh, uh, tropical in terms of, you know, forested. Um, we're up about uh, maybe a thousand feet up, so, you know, I can, you know, everybody has a view out here, you know, it's pretty cool We uh, on the side of the hill. Um, so you know, I can see, I can see kind of part of Kahului, and I can see uh, Molokai, and uh, you know, around on the kind of towards Hana, I can see around the corner up the Kenai area out there a little bit. So we got a really cool view from here. Um, but you know, it's it's the best. I mean, no koe, as they say. What, um, you have? Are you growing some fruit? What kind of trees? Uh, everything. You know, I've been putting in trees since we moved here. We we just bought a piece of property and built our own house out here, and we've been here about fourteen years. Uh, so you know, I got papayas and mangoes and uh, some macadamias. Um, I got a, a ulu tree, breadfruit tree growing. Um, we actually been discovering old trees on the property here so we got some uh, kind of interesting uh, old old uh, backyard mango tree we found out here and uh, um, does Patrick Jr. reside at the same residence? He does yeah yeah he's here he's kind of been in and out because he was going to school up in Washington but uh, he's back around here doing uh, some ag- really I, he's deeper into the agriculture than I am. He's been uh, planting all kinds of stuff and uh, 
he's really into uh, more sustainable um, agriculture and uh, permaculture and that you know you don't go in and dig up the soil you try to preserve the the topsoil as it is and then you you add to that on top through a, a particular process so you build up the soil on top of the old soil and uh, he's he's pretty pretty innovative in, the, in what he's doing right now and, and the way he's doing it kind of going back to the old, the old way of, of planting and he really is uh, getting into the uh, native Hawaiian stuff he's he's uh, been growing uh, uh, kalo and um, sweet potatoes, the purple Hawaiian sweet potatoes. Mm. He's, he's getting it all going on here. He's, he's pretty innovative. He's got a big a big master plan uh, that he's getting into, and he he likes the you know local farmers markets, and he's trying to he wants to promote more of that more uh, of you know, island fruits and vegetables being grown and and uh, traded and sold here within the islands. He thinks that's an important part of our future, I, and I agree with him. I, I think far too much uh, imported fruits and vegetables where we have this fantastic opportunity here uh, to grow things because everything grows so well here, and we're not really taking full advantage of the the opportunities we have with our agriculture. So I'm hoping that, uh, you know, that that expands more in the future. I think that's uh, that's a no-brainer for, for the people. You know, I mean, it, it costs more to, to buy outside produce, I think, than uh, we need to be paying. We could be growing it most of it ourselves. So uh, You're right on the money, and that's funny that you that he's so into agriculture uh is, is he still playing the, the music or yeah he plays he plays too um and he loves music uh, but i think he likes uh growing things just about as much if not more the it's funny you mentioned the agriculture because when you watch that video uh with the uh the 30 rock stuff about you guys appearing on there <laughs> and in, in the in the video you're passing around a bit of agriculture i'd say a marley sized bit of agriculture well, that was that we were acting. I, I could tell. I could tell we were <laughs> probably not very well. We weren't acting <laughs> well, but we were we were giving it a, a college try anyway. But when you see like a doobie brother with that, <laughs> just has its own resonance. Anyway, it's a funny video to see, to see you guys. <laughs> and I mean, you're like writing character, dude, playing exactly to the character that anybody would assume. <laughs> we are. That's who I am. I know. All right. So at least some of this record, um, as I've been, uh, I've really been enjoying the album. Um, some of World Gone Crazy was actually recorded over there on Maui and pa- yeah. H- how much? Just the Willie stuff, or a little bit more? Um, a lot of the the stuff that I did on on my songs, I recorded uh, a good portion of the acoustic guitars over there um, at uh, my friend Dave Russell's studio, um, Paia town recorders um and i did a lot of vocals there backgrounds and some lead vocals um i did some electric guitars there as well um so you know with technology being uh, what it is today you know you we used uh all digital recording and uh pro tools particularly we were able to uh record things at almost any any location and they would uh, be easily transferable to to our master uh, recording in, that we were working on in, in California because of the format that we were using so that that was you know really a plus for me to be able to do a lot of the kinds of things that I I normally would do you know in this in the studio we were working at simply because that's where all the the technology is, but that technology being so easily exported, uh, we were able to do things over here, and it was just, you know, really great to be home, and, and uh, you know, e- easy to, if I had an idea, I could go, oh yeah, well I'd like to add this, and then I could just go over there and do it, so um, that it's, you know, modern recording has, has come a long way, and it's it just really much more convenient in, in that respect. Uh, it's n- it's nice to see uh, that more than 
that's refreshing. So you were able to do more than just the willy stuff there, and um, you're using it and, and being this as your home base. That makes total sense. How how did you? There's there's a great song with Willie, and it's fun to hear how the vocals the interplay with it. I know we won. It's called. Talk about first getting to know him as a person, and about you know if you were there for it, the recording that he did on the record. Um, I've known Willie for as long as I've lived here, just about, um, met him when, when I first moved over, um, actually through, uh, a, a, a scouting function that I, we went, I went to with my son, um, some kind of a, of a Cub Scout party or something, and Willie happened to be there. I think I had bumped into him over at Charlie's here in, uh, Paia, um, one morning having breakfast and, and we chatted briefly and then uh, I bumped into him again at the at the Cub Scout thing and it was after that <laughs> got to be friends and he said hey you should come over sometime and we have a po- we have a poker game and we'd love to have take your money you know so <laughs> so I ended up uh, you know going over there at some point and then um, through you know the the kids started were hanging out together uh we all kind of became our families became close my wife and and willie's wife became friends and uh lucas and patrick jr his boys and my boys were friends and uh you know willie and i became friends and that's kind of how how it all started and then we've just you know had a great relationship all these years and we always you know he had said really years ago he said yeah we ought to get together and write something one of these days and so uh kept looking for the you know well, what you know where would you know what would we do how would we write something and what would we write it for and then this you know we went back in the studio to record this record and i had this song that uh, i was working on but it really wasn't a song yet it was just a bunch of chord changes and a, a little bit of a melody and i i think i had like part of a first verse and uh so then i hand you know kind of handed it off to him and then he went you know handed it back to me and with uh, the lyrics kind of written on the back of what i had given to him and uh then i went in and kind of did a demo of what you know his ideas were uh and you know kind of uh improved on what i had come up with in the first place and then uh sort of had a a song really more of a demo at that point and then i played it for him and he said yeah that that sounds good and then i went and played it for the band and everybody liked it and so so then we went on and recorded the track um and then i kind of did a rough vocal of my own on it and then got together with willie and, and i i said would you be interested in uh singing on the track with me and he said yeah i'd love to and so uh, then we went in here in Paia and he he sang the second verse and part of the chorus with me we kind of traded off uh, some some vocal lines through the through the tune and so that's that's how it, we ended up with this final version we went back and, and kind of stuck it all together and it, and it seemed to work pretty well i thought that's yeah, a cool tune and he's so different in his singing style um so it it, when he comes in, you almost you, you not to say you're straining your ears, but you're listening a little bit more attentively to follow along, perhaps uh, with what he's saying. A little different. He sounds a little different on this than I think he that he has sounded on some of his own songs or songs that he's done with, you know, in a more country traditional uh, kind of a setting. Uh, you know, this is a little, kind of country, but it's a little more pop sounding, maybe. And so uh, it's interesting to see him within the you know, the context of, of singing with us, it's just a little bit different. I think I, I like the, you know, he, he brings another, a different thing to what we do, but I felt like we brought a little something different to what he does. So it, it kind of made a little a different approach all the way around, I thought. Well, considering who was involved, I'm sure somebody brought a big bag of something tasty. Ah, <laughs> uh, could be. Could, that could have happened. I don't know. <laughs> It's just so funny, dude, to, to think of Willie and you guys in the same place at the same time. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> epic, isn't it? <laughs> whole whole lot of puffing going on. Um, and it's something you said in there is a great lead into another character's on the record. You said, 
uh, paraphrasing, you said something how Willie didn't exactly sound a typical Willie style on there. Nor does uh, another cat who's on the record, and it's kind of a more serious vibe, and but uh, certainly worth going uh, and exploring with you. There's an overwhelming sense of emptiness in Don't Say Goodbye. Uh, ironically, Norton Buffalo on the track, a uh, brilliant musician I had the pleasure of interviewing and meeting and stuff, and, and who we sadly recently lost. There's such a... a um, I don't know if it's South American, almost tango-ish, bossa nova, kind of Latin vibe, and uh, you've got Michael's soulful vocals, but Norton's sound, getting back to what you said about Willie not sounding like Willie, Norton's sound is very different, too. When did you first get to know him, um, and how did he get into your life, Patrick? Boy, I have to think about that for a minute. Uh, I probably got to know Norton... um, pretty well back around the time we were doing an album called Living on the Fault Line. Mm-hmm. Um, I had met him a few times before, but I didn't really know him until he came in and played on that record. Um, actually, I'm trying to think. I, no, he, I take it back. He played on another album of ours um, called um, Stampede. I think he played on Stampede even even before that. But he had, I take it back. It was Living on the Fault Line, uh, and he played on a song that Michael McDonald wrote. And that's when I really first really kind of got to know him, uh, right during that time period. And, um, you know, he just was such a, a warm, uh, loving, you know, open kind of a guy, and his the musicality of uh, uh, that he had on so many levels was amazing. He played the guitar. He was a great singer, a great writer, and uh, the, you know nobody really played the harmonica quite like Norton. Uh, he could play anything from you know hardcore Paul Butterfield uh, kind of blues to uh, you know more jazzy kind of Toots Thielman. Uh, kind of thing, Stevie Wonder sound. To Steelman, that's what I was thinking of, brother, with the tune. And when, when you know, I just became very good friends with him as a, you know, personally, beyond the music, we got to be buddies, and, you know, he came over to Maui uh, several years ago um, and and did a gig with me. I, I, I we do a show here, uh, Gail Swanson and I have a thing called uh, Local Licks, Gail and Pat's Local Licks that we do every so often, and we try to do a show where it's Gail and I and a local musician. We've had uh, uh, Barry Flanagan did a show with us, um, Maurice Bega uh, did a show with us, so a local player here. Um, uh, Steve Sargenti uh, did a show with us, and then we would ha- bring in somebody from the mainland. Norton came in one time. Uh, Willie Nelson uh, did a show with us. Um, Mike McDonald sat in with us and did a show. Um, so we try to bring somebody in from the mainland uh, that's kind of a specialty guy, and we do an in the round thing where everybody plays. Uh, something that they've written, and then we kind of pass it around, and, and the people who are there listen and try to play along. If you know the song, or you know, add whatever we can, sing along, play along. Oftentimes, they're songs that we know, or songs that are easy enough to to figure out what's going on that we can add to them. That kind of a thing. Anyway, we brought Norton in to do a show with us, and it was just—he's such, such a great personality. He was funny, funny guy just you know cracking everybody up but he sang and played and uh people just were knocked out at at how great he was um so you know he he, there were so many levels to his music but when i was writing the song you know don't say goodbye i actually wrote it with ted templeman and ted had said uh this song reminds me of, you know, uh, a certain kind of a, of a style of music. He said, it reminds me of a soundtrack that I once heard on a, uh, some, um, it 
Italian movie, and he mm. he had a copy of this film that he showed me, and he played the soundtrack for me, and it was guitar, harmonica, um, you know, bass, drums, percussion kind of thing. It was a Latin flavored uh, soundtrack, and he he really that's that's the way he was hearing it musically, and then the message was. Uh, he was trying. He was thinking of a, of a Ernest Hemingway novel, uh, "The Sun Also Rises," and how we could incorporate the the lyric into that story that from that book. And I had never written read the book. And he said, "Oh, you got to read the book." So I went home and I read the book, and then we got back together and and tried to come up with a scenario that sort of resembled the story a little bit, uh, which it loosely has some references, nothing r- real, you know, in terms of really being uh, that uh, Spain. Uh, it's more, uh, I think, more like a South American thing than it is yeah. a Spanish thing. But, that's what I was saying. But that's sort of where it ended. It went from Spain to South America, but retaining a little bit of the uh, of the Ernest Hemingway vibe, and then Norton uh, bringing that uh, the Italian movie thing <laughs> that he had thought of. And then I, I said, well, how about, I would love to hear John play some violin, so uh, we, we'd have that kind of uh, uh, Django Reinhardt, mm. uh, Stepan Grappelli kind of uh, sound to it as well. I was kind of thinking of the hot band a little bit. So, I mean, it doesn't really sound like any of that, and yet it sounds like all of it. So that's right. kind of a... It has so many elements. And then in the end, as I, after we had pretty much done all that stuff... Uh, I said, uh, or Ted says, God, it'd be nice to have Mike singing on this. And I go, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It remi- it's starting to remind me of uh, a little bit of, a, of a, a Steely Dan kind of a thing with a funny South American lyric and uh, the Latin kind of jazzy thing. Uh, it would be neat to have that, you know, Becker Fagan kind of background vocal thing. So then... Uh, yeah, and really, that was kind of a Doobie Brothers thing. Really, in the old days, Mike and I used to think, sing things together, and uh, it sort of resembled that that background vocal. So then, uh, Mike was visiting here in Maui, and uh, I was doing some guitar overdubs. I called him. I said, "Hey, would you feel like singing on this track that I have?" And he said, "Oh, I'd love to. That'd be great." So I said, "Well, bring your wife with you because I really want to have your voice." with uh, a lady's voice uh, because I'd like to get that kind of uh, Asia kind of sound and so uh, Amy Holland McDonald came and sang and then uh, I, and then Gail Swanson was hanging around I said Gail why don't you put a part on there too so the two ladies and Mike together kind of brought that you know Hey 19 kind of a vibe to the background vocals as well although we kind of got Mike pushed a little bit up front yeah get that and make sure everybody knew who was singing there. Right. I'd say, yeah, he's pretty up front, and the vibe is, oh, it's haunting. It's a haunting song. worked for the song. You know, all those elements came together to kind of make the song, I think, uh, you know, what it is. It, that that vibe that you're talking about, that South American kind of quasi-jazz, Latin jazz thing. Right, and then on top of that, and the lyrical vibe and the title, you've got the passing of Norton. So it's it's just huge. Yeah, it's probably one of the last studio tracks that Norton played on. I don't know what uh, what all. he was working with Steve Miller around the same time period. There, I know Steve was doing that uh, blues album he has out, but uh, I think that they had already cut all the tracks for that. So this may have been one of the very last uh, studio performances. And I, we 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 just said, said you know we we. Uh, he just kept playing right out to the end, and we and when we mixed it, we said we we just want to mix it as far out as we can and let him go because every everything he played was was pretty stellar. I thought you know he really uh, really stepped up, and you know he's such a great player. He just you know brought brought he brought it all the way along, and then right to the end, he's playing some pretty interesting stuff all all the way through. So we just where it stops, where it fades out is just about the last note he played so that it was really cool that's funny you said i'd say you have that feeling when you're listening that you treated it just just the way you did it's it's a wonderful tribute to him um 
The DVD is great. Uh, I got to give it a quick plug because some of the things on there are so nostalgic like what's happening um where i didn't when i last talked to you i never got to hear about that if you can because it's featured on there very briefly but it's so rewarding for long-term doobie brothers fans to see try to recall first hearing of that opportunity and and share some memories of shooting it well it's kind of a funny uh, story there we you know our publicist at that time was a guy named david guest david guest uh Oh, gosh, I don't know how many years ago. He married Liza Minnelli in this crazy, high-profile wedding in New York. I don't know if anybody remembers that. I'm oh, sure yeah. Some of the people listening remember. He did your show in 2003 at the Blaisdell. That's right. And uh, David <laughs> is a very eccentric guy. You know, he was uh, friends with so many different people. You know, Michael Jackson was one of his good friends, and uh, we... Uh, you know, I got to be friends with Michael through David, um, Eddie Kendricks, Donnie Osmond, Aretha Franklin, um, all these different, you know, uh, Robert Mitchum, Robert Goulet. <laughs> I mean, if you could imagine all the crazy people <laughs> that he brought together. And I got to meet all these people through David. But anyway, um, at that time, he was our publicist and we met him uh he was working for uh willie mitchell out in uh, memphis who was the president of high records uh that was al green's record label at the time and um we we had been touring with the memphis horns and uh, they uh, were tied in with high records and uh, James Mitchell, the baritone player, was Willie's brother. And at some point, we were looking around for a publicist, and they said, uh, oh, you ought to contact this di- guy, David Guest. He's doing a great job for Al. So uh, we all loved Al Green, and you know, he, uh, he was doing really good uh, publicity at the time. So uh, David came to work for us, and we did all kinds of things. But he, at one point, uh, he came to us and said, well, I have this television program I want you guys to to appear on it's a it's kind of a new um you know black black comedy uh you know when you say black comedy it was you know african-american uh black in those days it was before african-american it was black right and he says uh you know i've gotten to be good friends with these folks and i know the producer and the director and uh, i told them that you know you guys might want to appear on the show and they were all jumping at it and said they'd love to have you and uh, they were going to write a special um, episode just for you guys and so uh, you know some of the guys went what (laughs) you know (laughs) not actors you know and they said well you know you get to play music on it and it'll be a great shot for you guys and you know some of the guys said no we're not going to do that and and, uh, I thought it was a good idea I thought it was just (laughs) crazy stuff so I said sure of course you know that'd be great so uh you know a couple of us that wanted to do it talked the other guys into it and uh so we ended up doing the show and in fact they wrote uh the script around us and they wrote it in a two part segment so not only were we on there one week we were on there the next week as well and that was about you know bootlegging music bootlegging so it was somewhat educational as well as being you know really funny it was a great hilarious show and that was kind of funny to see you know a bunch of howlies on this uh <laughs> you know show with all these with all these people and and they were so nice to us and they treated us so well and, and we just had a ball and got to know them and we did other things with them afterwards fundraisers and special shows and stuff and got to be friends with all the people in the cast and uh you know i i i venture to say more people remember us from that show than they even remember our music <laughs> every people come up to me and they go hey i remember you guys you were on what's happening <laughs> you know, they don't say hey i remember you guys you did taking it to the streets they don't say that you know they go i saw you on what's happening so uh yeah that was pretty funny <laughs> with rerun bootlegging you as i recall that's right and the and the recorder drops yeah so it was pretty cool and then when i when i was putting together i put that retrospective together basically i myself and another uh 
and a cinematographer friend of mine, um, you know, being the, the guy who was in the band from the beginning to till now, you know, people have come and gone, even the other lead singers and stuff have, have been in and out. I kind of had this, pers- you know, this perspective on the whole thing that enabled me to find all the footage from all the years where guys that weren't there at the beginning wouldn't remember that we had all this old footage and the guys that had left wouldn't remember the new footage that we had taped since then so i was able to go back retrieve all the footage we had a lot of it in storage and uh, i remembered where where a lot of it was in terms of you know what studios had it and what what uh shows we appeared on uh and was able to kind of go back and retrieve uh, a lot of that footage and there's even more since we did that i i have continued to to work on it. That was it's kind of a shorter piece. Of, it's about a half hour, a little over half an hour, um, where we're working on a little bit longer form, which will probably be oh, I don't know, an hour and a half, something like that. Uh, but it's it's really fun to go back and and find all that crazy old footage and and relive, you know, things that I even I had forgotten. You know, uh, I knew about the the times, and I knew we had footage, but I didn't remember what was on it exactly. So, I probably spent, you know, literally hundreds of hours going combing through uh, old old films and uh, videos to to find what we had, and then to go through and edit it all down to to what we ended up with there, which was really a kind of brief in in comparison to all the actual. Uh, stuff that we have in, in archives. It's it's amazing all the stuff that we saved. Yeah, no, I'm sure. It's a very it's a quick sample of, of a lot of stuff. Johnny Carson, a lot of precious moments are are on that. Um nice for folks who are not you know, familiar maybe with our past or those that that are that had forgotten, you know, what what the heck we had been up to all those years. Oh, sure. I got to loan it to my news director because I, I hadn't realized until today what a huge Doobie fan Kayla Rosenfeld here is. And she she said, make sure to tell him I saw him in Connecticut 20 years ago and it's one of my favorite shows. So I got to loan her the, the DVD. I listen to her every day on the radio, every morning. Do you? I do. I listen to you guys every day. You, listen, you hear me on the air? I certainly do. In the afternoon? I hear you, all, all of you. Whenever you're on there, Howard Dykus, I'm listening. Okay, wow. Did you did you listen to me when I was on 105.9? Um, I have heard you on there, of course. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it's it's nice to reconnect. I'm glad that you listened. That means a lot, and I'll tell her that. Um, as I wrap it up with you, um, I haven't talked about the show, and do you mind two more questions? Are you all right with time? Sure. 105.9. I'm, I'm not, that, I was thinking, you know, I, I listened to you on uh, Cape Boy. 90.7, but I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, 105. What's 105.9? That was when I used to be the afternoon DJ at the Honolulu Rock Station called 105.9, the Big Kahuna, 105.9 Cape Hoy. Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. And I've been at doing the afternoons here for a couple of years, so I was just... I did hear you on there. I, I was trying to, I'm trying to put it all together, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. I mean, you know, Maui, you don't. It, it wasn't as big, but I used to, I used to have a pretty sizable Maui audience, so that's why I figured you might have been listening. Um, the shows that you got coming up, how does how does War end up on, on that bill? It's an incredible double bill for island folks. That's uh, you know one of those things. I think probably our, our agent, uh, you know, got them on the show with this, uh, but also the promoter. I think uh, saw that uh, you know they were available to do that we have done a lot of shows with them through the years um they just continue to be a great great act you know a great band they they kill every night you know, people go crazy when they hear all those songs and they really play well i mean just as well as they ever did and so you know you close your eyes and uh you're you're listening to to the records you know i mean they just are they have it together so well and and wonderful people really great people we've done a lot of shows with them all really since we both you know started out and uh all all through the years we have continued to do you know i bet you we've done you know 50 shows with those guys or more through the years 
Yeah, no, that's a long, a long run back, uh, and it'll be exciting for folks to have both on one bill. I was just curious because it, it took me by surprise the thought that the, we're going to have both of you back to back on one bill in the arena. That's like a, that's a, only thing I could think of. Patrick was that epic show, uh, which I briefly mentioned earlier, two thousand three. Your last time in the arena, you had Isaac Hayes on the same bill. Uh, my boys came along and uh, they cornered him and asked him to do. Uh, to to do a, a routine from uh, South Park, <laughs> Chef. He was so nice. He just said he started saying, "Well, chillin'," you know, <laughs> started talking to him. And I was we were on the floor. It was so funny. He was still totally cool. So you had some time with him back there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, again, that was David's show. Again, David is such a crazy wild guy but uh, he's the one that brought all those artists together uh to do that show you know it was all all these memphis people from memphis and uh martha reeves shaka khan yeah he knows all he knew all those people and asked him to step up and i believe it was a benefit i, I don't think anybody got paid for that show that was just strictly uh um, raise money for charity as i recall well, when you're coming through town um, and you're here for, for the night, do you think uh, you'd be willing to allow me to record a brief in-person interview? I would love that. That would be great. Aloha, this is Pat Simmons of the Doobie Brothers, and I'm hanging with my brother Dave. It's our favorite time of day. Hey, brother Dave, have a happy 420. Aloha, this is Patrick Simmons of the Doobie Brothers, and I'm hanging with my buddy Dave Lawrence. It's our favorite time of day. Hey, brother Dave... Have a happy 420.